We are in a sense the voice of it, in some ways, a voiceless universe. We're to give voice to the heart of love at this universe. We, we have the ability to know that love, to respond in love. And that means in, you know, following the gospel, I mean, the Beatitudes, right? To be merciful, to be forgiving, to be compassionate, to be trusting, to, be, to live in truth, you know? Um, and I think it doesn't take all that much, but it takes us to get out of our, to get rid of ourselves so that we can really, really find ourselves in another. You gotta die to live. You do have to die to live. How many times Jesus was saying, unless the grain of the wheat, you know, falls to the ground and dies, it's just going to remain one single little grain and it's going to die. You know, it will just get withered away. I mean, you know, he has many parables, the parable of the seed and the sower, you know, on ro what's the rocky ground if not the hardness of the human heart. You know, I just can't afford to let any of these new ideas in. I've got my whole, you know, my whole system's established. It makes me feel good. I'm not, I'm not going to budge. Great. Okay. Well, you make the choice. That was, and so this is the beauty of God's love, always freedom. Christianity is really at the heart of it all. It's about freedom. We are to be growing into freedom. Uh, and so if we find ourselves you don't enslaved. Take freedom and conquer it. That's what the, the Eucharisticalness of No, of it you can't like conquer you're freedom. Yeah, you can't even buy freedom, circle. by the way. I mean, you can't buy freedom. You know, you can buy all the stuff in the world. You can buy as many houses and boats and cars as you want. You'll be enslaved more and more, right? So freedom can only come from a deep inner, it's in the heart, right? Only the heart that knows where its treasure lies is really free. So and you I, say that the way forward is... The way inward. Mm -hmm. The way forward is the way inward. And I think that's really, A, being at home in yourself. You know, this is who you are. With your gifts, your quirkiness, you know, your bad temper and your good days. I, I think one of the things we need to do again is learn to love ourselves, not in a narcissistic way. To be holy yourself, to be at home in yourself. You know, and to say, this is who I am, and I'm going to give it my best, all my, you know, what I have, I'll give to another, right? I give myself to another in the giftedness that I am, because God actually loves you as you are, you know? And what? God wants you to grow into what you are, into the fullness of How that. How do I make money? Yeah, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's really not that complicated. We have made it endlessly complicated and complex. God is really quite simple. I mean, and that's what the medievalists would say. God is utter simplicity. God is utter oneness. God is utter love. So we have broken down God and chopped God into all sorts of ideas and, you know, categories and systems. And I'm like, oh my God, this is like, it's, you know, brain fatigue. And it's really simple because God is absolute love. God loves you absolutely. And God simply wants you to respond in love with the gifts that God has given you, to grow into your own freedom. That's it. If we could do that, I think our world could actually find a new level of solidarity. I mean, we wouldn't be hoarding things. We would want to share because we would know that we belong to one another, that we belong to the earth. The, the funny thing is we have the capacity for this, you know. We are killing that capacity. We're, de we're, in, we're in deep denial of it. Um, we're sure we don't have it, you know, and uh, I know we do because, again, we can walk out onto that beach in a sunset and we know that there's an other at the heart of our lives. Whether or not we want to name it God or whatever you want to call it, we know that we did not create that beauty. Um, and so, you know, I think St. Augustine said it, said it so beautifully in his confessions. You know, I went to the mountains and I called out, you know, where are you, God? And I looked at the skies and I said, where are you, God? And I looked everywhere. And he says, you know, but you were within, um, deeper to me than I am to my own self. And I think that's the part we have to begin to discover. Science has discovered the heavens. We can name all the planets. We can tell you how to build a rocket ship and how to build a robot. But do we even know that we have a soul, that we have something that has an infinite capacity for love, an infinite, infinite capacity for God, and that God loves, is seeking to love in that soul to become God here in this world. So I think we're missing out on the greatest opportunities of our lives. And so, you know, a lot of my work is just trying to bring this into a kind of coherent framework that we can begin to turn around a little bit from the very, very unhealthy habits 
that we find ourselves in and locked into. Uh, that we become, in a sense, socially and culturally autistic, cut off, socially awkward, socially isolated from one another. And so even the word love just strikes us as like uh, superficial, something that, you know, is just silly to talk about. And uh, not cosmic, not, cosmic not, <laughs> not, you know, something measurable, something, something quantifiable. Uh, and, and yet, you know, that which is the, mo the bedrock of what we are can never be reduced by science to something quantifiable. It will always elude our grasp. And that elusive of grasp is what God's about, right? We know God because God is experienced in those deep levels of love and consciousness. But to grasp God as something that we can control and manipulate and form ourselves, not possible, you know? God will always be beyond anything of our grasp. So it's a great mystery. We, we find ourselves in, I think what I'd like to, in a sense, if we could reawaken to the great mystery we find ourselves in. And we don't like, science doesn't like mystery, right? Science is like, no mystery, you know, like Stephen Hawking's. We, we'll discover all the forces of the great universe and we'll unify them and then we'll have no need for God. I'm like, seriously, dude. Right. <laughs> You're a smart guy, you know, you should know the limits of your own intelligence um, or our own lifetimes anyway. So even artificial intelligence is trying to, you know, the, the whole transhumanist approach like, well, you know, religion's a failure. Now we'll just save ourselves. We'll just, you know, make ourselves into smarter and live longer and we'll build ourselves, you know, into something better. And well, really? The other thing is, we don't want to die because we haven't really quite. Oh, what? What? <laughs> we are you haven't. Are you, well, I are think you this saying is we don't it. get out of here alive? This is oh my god! <laughs> I gotta cut this. I gotta call my kids. Oh my god! Right? This is our other thing. So two things. Like yeah, one little other thing. We're meant for freedom, and we don't want to die. And, and I think we're doing everything we can to postpone death. You know, really, everything. We're not going to die. Well, that, that's our full freedom. I think that that's the whole thing. The whole thing, this is all sort of, I mean, we're dying all along the way. We know that, you know, stuff today is not what it was yesterday. We're not even what we are today than what we were yesterday, right? So, but the fact there's something about death that's so final and it's so, you know, like, what if I don't achieve the happiness that I long for and, you know, I don't become the great something I want to be and then I die. And it's like, well, you might start now to live in this moment as if death is going to be in the next breath. Right? Because that's all we have is breath to breath, moment to moment. I mean, you can walk out into the street, get hit by a car. You can walk into, a, in our world today, as violent as it is, you know, you can go get gas and be gunned down. So there is no, there's no contingency plan here, you know. Um, so I do think, I do think that uh, following like the great Karl Rahner, a great Catholic theologian, you know, that death is our full flowering of who we are. I think we really become truly person in that moment of death. All that we have sought to do, everything, every relationship in our lives for good or bad is summed up in that moment of death. And I do think that that's where the vessel is broken and the ointment of what we are is released into that full embrace of, of God's love at, as it continues to create. So um, I think we need to live uh, in a sense so that we are ready to die and we need to be dying in order to really live. Uh, and, you know, it's, I'm certainly not the first to say this. Many, you know, wonderful thinkers along the way have realized this. Um, St. Teresa of Avila said, you know, that if we die, you know, if we really die to the self, right, to that selfish self, the egotistic self, then we will never die, right? And that's the beauty of it. You know, once we really know that love of God in our lives, we never really die. Freedom. We enter into that full flowering of freedom in that, in that embrace of love. So.